BQ sent me their new Pixel L 3D printer, and it has some really interesting features that I haven't seen on other 3D printers. So let's check it out and see if everything is worth it or just a giant gimmick. So right out of the box, there's quite a few parts for this being a resin 3D printer, seeing that normally there's not much assembly, and this is partially due to the hinged enclosure that doesn't come pre-installed on the machine. But this just goes on with four screws and four locking nuts. The rest of the parts all go into the build plate, which you can see is a massive piece of metal and it is very heavy. But it also has an interesting design. And what I mean by that is all of the mounting hardware and leveling stays on the machine. And this allows you to remove the build plate without risking you messing up your level. And when it comes to leveling, you get to use these three micrometers so you can dial in the level pretty much perfect. And getting it ready for leveling is just like most printers on the market now. You just loosen up a couple screws so everything is free to move around. And I also have to remove the resin vat. And since we're on the topic of the vat, let's talk about some of the features that are included in it. And you might have noticed a bottle attached to this in the back. And this is to be filled with resin, so if you're making a really large print, you won't run out. Or at least you can have an extra 250 milliliters as backup. And that's on top of the actual vat being able to hold 900 milliliters of resin. But that's not the only feature that the vat has. It also has a heater built into it. And this will keep your resin at the proper temperature for printing, which can be a major problem in the winter time when it's really cold out, especially when you're printing with castable resins. And really this should help the print quality of all resins. And honestly to me, this is one of the biggest selling points of this printer. Seeing that a lot of people use this outside of their house or in places that don't really have temperature controls, this is going to be really helpful. Helpful. And it has a built-in power loss protection, so if you remove this while the machine is on, it will turn it off so you don't accidentally electrocute yourself or ruin anything. And if I'm understanding their marketing info correctly, this has a piece of glass over the screen to protect it. But anyways, back to leveling this, just take your standard piece of A4 paper and put it over the screen, and in the software just go to tools and home the printer. This will lower your build plate down to the paper and you can start leveling. And really all you're going to do is dial in all of your micrometers to the same measurement and you should be good to go. And now you can just lock everything in place by tightening up the screws on the side of the build plate. And in the software of the machine, you just tell it that this is the new zero offset. Then just move up the build plate, remove the paper, reinstall everything, and we're ready to start printing. So when it comes to the printing part of this, I'm going to be using some new resin from Chitu Systems. It's their conjure line of resin, and I'm going to be using the tough one, which is a semi-flexible version of resin. And if you look on the bottle itself, it does have a print temperature range of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. So that heated vat is definitely going to come in handy with this particular resin. And I'm going to have to do some test prints, seeing that the print times for this are all over the place on the website, and there is nothing for this particular printer. And I'm going to be printing a simple file that takes about 15-20 minutes from Frozen to do all my calibration. And I'll have links to everything in the description below. So my first test print is done, but I've already found something I don't like about this printer. And it's that the build surface holds resin like crazy. And there's no real good way to let it drip dry or hang this so it drips back in the vat. So you're going to be stuck either scraping it off or just wiping it all off and losing resin. And the same thing for the top of it. It doesn't have enough of a slant for it to just drip off, so it just kind of sits here. And a bit of resin will get stuck in this area, even if you're not maxing out your vat or using the auto feeder. But with all that said, it didn't hinder my printing at all, and I was able to get all of this done. So I just started on the higher end of the settings and worked my way down until I got everything looking exactly how I wanted it to, which was 1.9 seconds per layer. So I did another test print with these settings on another test model, and everything came out really nice. So with that and everything dialed into my liking, I can start my first real print. And after about six and a half hours, here it is. And at first glance, everything looks like it came out pretty good. So let's just scrape it off the build plate. And there we go. Now I just need to clean off all the uncured resin from this. And to do that, I'm going to be using this new automated wash and cure system that I got from iBoss. And I have an entire dedicated video to this that you can check out in the description below. But to quickly sum it up, you just put your part into it, close it up, and then set all your different settings for the wash, dry, and curing, and push go. And this will pump in your IPA or water to wash your part and pump it out when it's done, when it's moving on to its next step which is drying off the part before turning on the UV lights and curing it. And after all that, your part is completely done and you just need to remove the supports. And it looks like it did a really good job cleaning and curing all this, but it looks like the bottom side of this still is a little wet, but that's not really a problem with this model. To make removing the supports as easy as possible, I'm just going to put this into a container and fill it with some hot water to soften everything up. 
And as you can see, the supports just kind of pop off, at least on a lot of the thicker areas. You want to be a little bit more careful with the finer bits, and they can be easily removed with the little clippers. But for the most part, as you can see, everything just kind of pulls off, leaving behind just some little supports that you can remove later. And after a quick cleanup, both of the models came out looking really nice. So on the Guts model from Berserk, you can see some of the supports still on the back and the underside of the cape that need to be cleaned up a little bit better. But overall, I think this has really good quality in the print and everything looks sharp and nice. And when it comes to the other model, it was able to print extreme details on this one that I didn't even know were there compared to the one I printed on a 2K printer a while ago. And you can see that you can kind of bend this material, like on the axe handle, without it breaking. And here it is side by side with one that I printed on a 2K printer a while ago. And you can see how much more detail I'm getting out of the new one, minus the small mistake on the axe head. And check out how flexible this stuff is. This is the supports, obviously, but you can bend them all over the place and they don't break. They just kind of bend and bend back. So overall, I am really liking this printer and it's been pretty easy to use, but there are some things that can definitely use improvement. I like how it has a built-in air filtration system with a replaceable carbon filter, which is always a welcome addition to these printers, but the lid on this doesn't seal all the way, leaving a small gap and making this filter completely useless. Seeing after printing, my entire shop just reeked of resin. And I've already looked into an easy fix for this, and just adding a rubber gasket in these points would fix the problem. And the only other complaint I have about this I already addressed, it was the build plate holding too much resin after a print. And I think the easiest way to fix this would just be installing a magnetic build surface so you can just pop it off, scrape everything off, and you're good to go. And from the looks of it right now, no one makes one in the right size, not even BQ. So I ordered one that was close enough and it seems to work fine. And even with those cons, this is still a pretty good printer. And it's made using some pretty high quality parts. So if you're interested in one, I'll have links to everything I talked about in this video in the description below. If you have any questions or anything like that, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.